We're here with all the news, analysis, and predictions in the MCC pre-show. Minecraft Championships 18 is coming up, and here's everything you need to know going into the event. My name is Steinbolf, your main host, and I'm joined today by three good friends. Hello there, I'm X, and I'm excited for another spooky Halloween event this upcoming MCC. Hi, I'm Lockie, and I don't wear sunscreen at the aquarium. Hi, I'm Lucario, and I couldn't afford the cape for my costume. Please remember that it is impossible to fit every content creator into one single tournament, so don't be upset if your favorite isn't here. They're probably going to get another chance to compete in the future. And, as always, we are not the actual Nox crew. We're just a group of friends trying to improve the MCC experience for everybody. Alright, now we're going to go through each team and talk about their keys to victory. To start us off, the Red Ravens have Tommy in it, Phil's a Minecraft, Wisp, and Jack Manifold. This is a strong PvP and movement team whose players have had a good history in MCC, but have struggled in their most recent events. Battlebox and to get to the other side will be strong games for them, and they could also do surprisingly well in survival games. Up next, we've got the Orange Oozers. Kratzy and Tapple return after missing out on MCC 17, teaming with Gizzy Gazza and fan favorite player, Mephs. This team are incredibly strong in both movement and PvP games, such as Parkour Tag and Battlebox, but could struggle with Sands of Time and Grid Runners as neither Mephs or Gizzy have played the Season 2 version of either of those games. However, they're certainly a strong dodgeball contender. The Mustard Mummies consists of Scott's Major, Sapnap, Sylvie, and the musical genius that brought you life by the sea, Tubbo. This is a very strong lineup and a well-rounded team in terms of skill, and stands a fantastic chance of getting Tubbo his first win if they make it to dodgeball. They'll be ready to take on all kinds of games, parkour, tag, ace, race, and survival games, and could very well be one of the teams to beat in this event. Next, we got the Lime Liches with Illumina, Captain Puffy, Raigai Rocky, and a newcomer, G Nelly. Raigai is back for his first canon MCC since MCC 12, and he's teamed with his MCC Pride partner, Illumina. This team is really going to rely on catching up G to speed on how to succeed in different MCC games and following Illumina's lead in PvP games like Survival Games, Battlebox, and Sky Battle, as well as doing well in movement games like Parkour Tag and Ace Race. There are also the Green Goblins with H-Bomb, Grian, Gemini Tay, and Neachu. Grian is coming off of his breakout performance and win in MCC 17. This team will dominate almost any communication-based game, but will really struggle with anything PvP related. They are once again relying on H-Bomb's leadership and a good game order to guide them through this MCC. Next up, on the Science Centipedes, we've got Captain Sparkles, Rambu, Snake Snag, and Wilbur Soot. With Wilbur, Rambu, and Captain all having the third place curse, this team will be hoping to place just one place higher and make it to dodgeball this MCC. They'll definitely be a strong team for to get to the other side in Battle Box, but could struggle in games like Survival Games and Sky Battle. Alright. The awesome Aqua Abominations are made up of Puns, Goomy, Antfrost, and Shovel. Puns will be looking for redemption after his last performance, and could very well take the lead on this team. One game that they're going to want to play will be Battlebox, if it is played, and the curse of no Battlebox is finally broken. But other than that, another game they want to be on the lookout for is Ace Race, because they all have a great chance of performing it really well in that one. Next up, we have the no longer blue black cats, but the blue banshees with Pizza Hut, 5up, Dan TDM, and Pearlescent Moon. This team is going to rely on getting those team gains in, excelling in communication based games like Build Mart and Grid Runners, as well as games like Hole in the Wall that fits their skill set better than most other teams. They will want to avoid some PvP games like Battle Box and Survival Games, though. Our penultimate team is the Violet Vampires, made up of CPK, Solidarity Gaming, Orion Sound, and Smallish Beans. These British boys will excel in communication games, led by CPK, who returns after his glorious MCC 16 win. Specifically, Build Mart and To Get to the Other Side are games that this team will want to play late. And our final team for this event is the Future Frankensteins. Newcomer Awesome Dude teams up with fellow Manhunt veterans Dream and George Not Found, with Quackity returning after his victory in MCC 15. This fan favorite team should be incredibly strong in games like Battlebox, Sands of Time, and Sky Battle, but they might want to get Buildmar out of the way early if they want to make it to Dodgebolt. And now, with all the teams introduced, we're going to go over to our brand new segment, Game Masters. Welcome to Game Masters. We're going to go through each MCC game and decide which team we think will do the best at it. 
Starting with Ace Race, many teams could have strong showings in this game, but I would give the edge to the Orange Uses. Kratzy, Tapple, and Mefs have all proven that they can hold their own on multiple different maps, and I could easily see two or three of them making the top 10. I think I'm gonna go with Aqua for this game. Having a couple players who can make top five in this game is crucial for winning the game in terms of points, which Aqua has in Puns and Antfrost. Shovel is a veteran of Ace Race, and Gumi is a veteran of the practice server Ace Race at least, so they would definitely follow up and solidify Aqua's first place. So for the next game, Battle Box, I'm gonna go with the obvious answer here. The orange looks beyond scary for this game. Kratzy was a member of the infamous Coral Carolers who had their perfect run. Mefs and Tapple have both proven they're such scary PvPers, and Gizzy can do very well in Battle Box on the right team, such as MCC3 Aqua. I actually see the red team as being capable of dominating this game. With Wisp and Filza able to call the shots, Jack is a great support player, and Tommy is an energetic stabbing force, this team has the potential to find a powerful strategy that guides them to first place. Now for Build Mart, I'm going to go for a bit of a risky guess and say that the blue team could win. 5up has been constantly experimenting with unique strategies for this game, and now that he has a team with great comms all around, his 5-head brain could finally reach its full potential. I think it's going to be green for this one. Green and MCC 17 Build Mart was just so impressive to watch. H-Bomb was, was on one of the best Build Mart teams ever, and Gemini, Tay, and Neachu don't have the same peak performances, but this could definitely be the MCC they earn it. Alright, so for Grid Runners, this one might shock some people, but I think it's pink. Dream played a huge part in Cyan's winning run last MCC, and I think Quackity and George will be quick to adapt with Dream. And I personally trust in Sam's ability to adapt to this game quickly. I personally have faith in the Green Guardians to win this game. H-Bomb will provide strong leadership as always, Gemini Tay and Nikki have both been on successful Grid Runners teams before, and Grian has arguably the best comms in the entire event. Now, for Hole in the Wall, I would give the edge to the blue team. Pete is almost unanimously agreed on as the number one Hole in the Wall player, and Pearl has also shown a lot of potential in this game. Dan TDM and 5 Up probably won't get the highest scores in the world, but they will still do just enough to give blue team the win. I'm gonna go with Mustard on this one. Sapnap has shown recently that he's one of the better Hole in the Wall players, and Scott and Tubbo have both shown a lot of potential in the game at different times. Sylvie will certainly pull her own weight as well on this team. For the next game, Parkour Tag, I think I'm gonna go with this. I think it's the scariest team in the event, Orange. Mefs placed top six both times he played Parkour Tag, and Gizzy got top 10 last time he played it. Kratzy and Tapple are just absolutely cracked when it comes to movement, so I think this team has first in the bag. My prediction is actually that the Mustard Mummies are going to win here. Sapnap has proven himself as one of the scariest players in the game, Sylvie has had some of her best performances in Parkour Tag, and Tubbo and Smajor should be more than capable of holding their own. Now onto Sands of Time, I'm going to go with a risky pick for Sands of Time and choose the Cyan Centipedes. Captain Sparkles has had many strong performances in the dungeon, Ranbu has had great comms and has overall good mechanical skills, Wilbur has been very successful as a sandkeeper, and Sneak has a lot of experience in survival worlds that should make him a skilled dungeon runner. For Sands of Time, I don't think there's any way I can't give the win to H-Bomb's team. H has time and time proved again his capabilities of leading his team to a first place in Sands of Time, and I don't think this time will be any exception to that rule. For Sky Battle, I'm gonna go with the Pink Parrots. Dream and George demonstrated their dominance in this game last year, actually, when Dream set the record, I think. Fast forward to the past few MCCs, Dream, George, and Quackity are all still doing very well in the game, and I don't see any reason they'd lose that momentum. I will actually give Sky Battle to the Orange team. Tapple has harnessed his Sky Wars experience multiple times in MCC, Kratzy has shown that he can pop off if he has another strong PvPer with him, and Mefs and Gizzy are all-around players that can succeed in anything given the right circumstances. Now, for survival games. Although teams like the Mustard Mummies look very scary in this game, I will actually give the win to the Aqua team. Puns and Antfrost are a scary duo that can easily contend with anybody else in PvP. Shovel and Gumi are great team and support players that will stick to the team strategy and stay alive late into the game. I'm definitely giving SG over to Mustard this MCC. Sapnap is one of the best SG players we've seen this season. Tubbo has also gotten an SG win this season. Sylvie placed top 5 MCC 16, and Scott shocked us all with Yellow's performance in MCC 17. For it to get to the other side, I think I'm going to go with the Red Ravens. Out of Blue's lackluster performance last MCC, this game was one of the exceptions. Tommy also earned top 10 that game, and Jack earned top 20 last MCC. I think there's a lot of potential for team bonuses in this group. 
I'm going to go out on a limb here and say that it'll be, in fact, the Lime team that wins to get to the other side. This has always been one of Illumina's best games. Captain Puffy and Raigai have shown pop-off potential here, and Gene Ellie will probably be able to follow whatever strategy the team decides to use. All right, and that concludes the segment Game Masters. We hope you enjoyed it, and now let's take it over to an old classic, This or That. All right, Legends, it's time for my personal favorite segment, This or That. Pretty self-explanatory, we're going to be shown a question with two answers, and we're going to pick either this, or we're going to pick that. Pretty simple. X, why don't you take it away with our first prompt? All right, so the first question that we have is... Sapnap or puns? Who gets the higher placement individually, this MCC? What are your thoughts on this one? Mm, Alright, let's think. You know, after a solid four seconds of thinking about it, I think it's time for the puns redemption arc. Last MCC was something that I'm sure he and the rest of us would like to forget and move on from. And teaming with the likes of like Shovel and Antfrost, there's a solid chance he can go pretty far individually. I think I'd agree with you that um, Puns has a really strong duo this MCC, but I feel like Sapnap's just been super dominant in PvP games this season, and I think this event's gonna have a lot of them. On top of that, I feel like his weaknesses, like Build Mart, his teammates cover that incredibly well, and so, for me, I'm seeing a Sapnap high placement over Puns this MCC. Alright, fair enough, fair enough. Mm. Alright, do we want to move on to our next this or that question? Yes. Okay. So, who gets more big sales at Build Mart builds? Green or Violet team? Ooh. I think Violet has four players who are all like solid at Build Mart, with Smallish Beans definitely being a strong Build Mart leader. Um, but Green, Green's got Grian, who's the Lord of Build Mart to lead them. So, we've seen him turn like mediocre teams into absolute Build Mart powerhouses before. And he's very much shaped the meta for this game. Um, everyone else on his team has super strong comms, and yeah, I can see Green leading Green Team to a big sales at Build Mart victory. Yeah, I I literally could not have said that better myself. Did you see how Green managed the Orange Team in MCC 17, alright? He runs Build Mart, alright? It's his game, his domain, Th they'll get the win. I agree with you on that one. Yeah, Green are gonna be a force to be reckoned with in Build Mart this MCC. Alright, next up. Who gets a higher individual placement? Dan TDM or Fiverr? Ooh. You know, I gotta go with my boy, Dan TDM. He's gonna be what I think will be Pete's right hand man. I'm expecting a, a strong showing from Dan, all right? The star of Minecraft Story Mode Episode 6. It's been too long since we've seen him, and I feel like with such a large audience, even with his large audience, sorry, let me say. He still, I feel sometimes he might be underrated and might fly underneath the radar, but I, I think he'll show us this event, what he, can, what he can do. I think I agree with you overall. Dan's definitely a super powerful right-hand man for Pete in a lot of games. But I do think 5-Up's going to have some really good call-outs this MCC in games like Grid Runners to help support the team. So it wouldn't shock me if he does manage to outplace Dan. I'd give this one a too close to call. Both players definitely have the potential to pop off this particular event. Could go either mm. way. Okay. With that, we move on to the fourth this or that question. Who gets the faster ace race completion? Pete or Illumina? Oh, for me, that's pretty obvious. I, I look at that and I know immediately Pete, all right? Pete is cracked, all right? D end of sentence. D don't get me wrong. Illumina is mad skilled as well, but I could never personally bet against Pete. There are three certainties in life. Death, taxes, and Pete being an MCC god. Unless his internet company has something to say about it. Yeah, I'd have to agree with you. Assuming that his internet company is cooperative this MCC, and it stays on Python's crypt as a map, Pete is going to once again dominate. I would say though, if it swaps over to either Space Race or Clouds, I could see it being a bit more competitive, and Illumina might be able to give Pete a bit of a run for his money. Okay, and with that, we come to the final and most important question of this or that. Does Battlebox get skipped once again this MCC? Boy, I hope so. <laughs> Nothing against Battlebox. I actually quite enjoy Battlebox, but I think it would be hilarious to keep the trend going. Imagine the disappointment of everyone when we miss Battlebox for the third straight event. Fourth, if you include MCC Rising. I, I, I'm disappointed in that. I'm, I'm just excited to see a Halloween Battlebox map. 
We missed out on it last MCC, and I just think that all the teams will be wanting that battle box map to be played. With a load of PvP teams this event as well, I could see it being played either pretty late or pretty early. So for me, I think we've actually got a solid chance of having a battle box return. I think we're setting up for the perfect failure. It'll be all the more climactic when it isn't played this time. Anyway, that concludes this segment of This or That. This has been X and Lucky, and now we're going to take it back over to the main desk for some individual predictions. Welcome back to the desk. It's time for predictions. Starting with my individual predictions, I expect Sapnap to pop off this event and possibly get first individual. I expect PvP to be very popular in this event, and Sapnap will take full advantage of it. I see a similar outcome for Punz, who's going to be very motivated to redeem himself after his low placement last event. I think Dream, after training a new player, will refine his own skills and enter this event determined to do well, which will bring him up to third. My Dark Horse player is Antfrost, who I think will put in lots of practice and help lead his team to dodge bolt. He has lots of potential for a breakout performance, being strong in the types of games that will likely be selected for this event. I have to say, Stein, I definitely agree with you that Satnap and Puns are likely to pop off this event, but disagree a wee bit about your first place pick. For me, I'm feeling that Kratzy will finally make it to first place individual with the support of both Tapple and Mephs. Kratzy has placed in the top 5 multiple times before, and with one of his strongest teams yet, I'm feeling an individual pop-off from him. Yellow will certainly be helping Sapnap get a high individual placement also, with Sapnap's weakest games being some of his teammates' strongest. Rounding out the top 3, I'm feeling that Ampfrost, Shovel, and Gumi will help push Puns back into 3rd. My Dark Horse pick is Captain Sparkles. The Captain hasn't made it to top 10 individual in a while, but I feel that this time around, the super relaxed team vibes on Cyan will help him definitely perform to his very best and let him break back into the top 10. Hmm, you see X, I like your predictions, except they suck. So I'm going to do the predictions and then they're going to be a lot better, alright? So, you will never, ever see me predict Pete below first place, unless he's not in the event. In which case, I'll put him third or fourth, alright? So he's going to be my first place prediction. I imagine Puns is ready to jump back into that S tier debate after the shocking performance we're not going to talk about, and Dream's team is going to fly high, so that's a top 3 that I feel like doesn't need to be too concerned, I feel like it's a very easy and safe top 3 bet. But for my Dark Horse player, it's all the way down in 10th place, but he'll just make it into the top 10, which is where our real hero makes his debut, George Not Found. George Not Found will be found in the top 10 because I believe in Goggy Supremacy. His team will go far and George will be a big factor in that. So everyone in my top three has already been set. I think this MCC will be very PvP oriented with how all of the teams are structured. So going off of that, I think Kratzy is finally due for his first place because Kratzy is cracked, his team is cracked, everything about that is cracked. Tapple and Mephs, who I also see doing very well this event, probably are probably the support Kratzy needs to finally earn number one after so long. I see Dream looking to do very well earning second in his second Halloween event, as well as being on a Dream SP team I do see doing very well in this event. And third, I have Sapnap because he's arguably the best Season 2 player. He's got one heck of a team behind him, and he's a PvP beast. My Dark Horse pick is actually Tommy in it. I think after one bad performance in MCC 16, people really forgot that he's a pretty talented guy. I mean, his team placed seventh last MCC and he still made top 20. I think his team's got a pretty good chance to do well with a bigger emphasis on PvP and movement. And Tom at the inside of it is gonna be taking a bigger leadership role and earning more points. So, I'm happy to see there's another Kratzy first place believer, Lucario. But I'm disappointed in you two, Lockie and Stein, for not believing in this amazing pop-off. Why aren't you guys feeling like Kratzy's gonna make it there this event? Uh, I mean, well, Kratzy, it's, it's been a while since he's gotten a first place contending performance. The last time it happened was really MCC1, where it was a lot less competitive uh, and there was, a, there was an easier path to a top individual position. Ever since then, pretty much the closest he's gotten was MCC13 when he was paired up with the legendary Sapnap. So in terms of highly competitive events, it seems very unlikely to me that Kratzy will get a first place performance. I could easily see him getting top five. First place seems a bit unlikely. So you say that the closest he got after MCC1 was MCC13, where he was teamed with Sapnap. One, he did better than Sapnap. 
and two, that was third place, and three, I think this team is much scarier than the Coral Carolers. Tapple and Mefs and Kratzy is just such a scary, and then Gizzy, that's th those four players, I don't even know how this team was allowed, partially, it, like, I, I see this almost on a similar level to the Coral Carolers in terms of skill and battle box. Now for our team predictions. I see the Mustard Mummies coming in at first and winning dodgeball. This team will excel at PvP and movement, and I expect a lot of those more sweaty games to be played in this event. They will be facing up against my Dark Horse team, the Aqua Abominations. I see a lot of pop-up potential in Puns and Antfrost, and I think Shovel and Gumi can be capable support players who will play the miscellaneous roles in the team's success. I'll be honest. For me, the Orange Oozers seem like such a powerful team this event, that I can't see them not making it to dodgeball. They're a powerful all-rounder team who I'm sure will be going into this MCC looking for a win. My other pick for Dodgebolt, and my personal belief in the winners, is Mustard, for very similar reasons to Stein. My Dark Horse team this event is the Green Goblins. Many people have been predicting this team in the bottom two placements, but I think with great leadership from both H-Bomb and Green, as well as, I don't, I don't know, some late teamwork games like Sands of Time, Green could definitely exceed everyone's expectations and get a nice high placement this MCC. Alright, first I need to get out of the way that my Cyan boys are here to shock the world. And while unfortunately they may miss out on Dodgebolt, I do think they're going to pass expectations and, and place third for no particular reason at all. But they will be falling short to the two teams that will be making Dodgebolt, Blue finishing in first place, because Pete is an unstoppable beast and Dan is very underrated. As well as it being George Not Found's time to shine, Fuchsia. I have no idea how to say that color, but the Frankensteins are gonna make it to Dodgebolt as well. It's gonna be a closer match than your stomach can process, but I, I predict Dream to lose his first ever Dodgebolt, and Dan TDM is going to slot the winning shot to win Dodgebolt for the Blue Banshees and book a spot in MCC All-Stars. Okay then, my dodgeball is very similar to X. I got both orange and mustard in dodgeball because orange just looks built for the PvP and movement games that looks like they'll be selected this MCC. And yellow has Sapnap who has been rising among the ranks among the top tier MCC players, followed with Scott and Sylvie who are both fresh out of good performances, and Tubbo who's had some great performances throughout his career. As for the dodgeball outcome, I do think orange will beat out yellow. While Sapnap is probably the best dodgeball player in my prediction, Orange is just a bit too much for Yellow to overcome. My Dark Horse team is Red. I do think the team dynamic here is really strong, as well as being up to standard for PvP and movement, which once again will be the games most likely selected this MCC. On top of that, there's always the motivation to redeem themselves from last MCC, pushing this team higher up in the standings. Wait. Yes. Wait, 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 wait. We're waiting. Wait. I think we're waiting, guys. Did you just say red is going to get third? I believe in red third place, yeah. What? I'm thinking red's gonna get tenth place. Okay. Okay. Hear me out. They they have some pretty skilled players. Think back to before last MCC when both Wisp and Phil tanked on the on one bad performance. This would have been a decent looking team. And I think that the potential is still there. The skill is still there. They just had one bad event. If if you go back to Game Masters, I think they can do really good and to get to the other side, they can do good in Sky Battle, they can do good in survival games, they have they can do good in Battle Box, they have games they can pop off in. I think the potential is there. All right, look, I also have to agree with Lockie. I'm seeing red in 10th place this MCC as well, but I think there's just a few issues which all add up and contribute to that. I feel like they're gonna struggle a tiny bit with leadership. Tommy's not a bad leader, but at the same time, he's got a very chaotic team that he's gonna have to lead this MCC with all of his friends. The other thing is I feel like Phil just hasn't been performing up to his full potential in recent MCCs. The highest placement this whole season, I believe, has been 18th place. If Rocket Spleef comes back this MCC, I could maybe see Phil getting a higher placement than that. But I just feel like, overall, they might not quite make it. Well, I like what he said. Wasn't a big fan of what you said. But I did want to jump on the Phil bandwagon, because as we all know, I, 
am a big lover of Filza. I have my Filza U2's figurine sitting right next to me. All right, I love Filza, but I don't have faith in Filza. Filza, sorry. I think Filza is heading towards one place and one place only, and that is the retirement home. Love you, buddy. <laughs> Season 2 has just not been it, alright? And we all know that sometimes Tommy and Phil have a bit of clashing when they're on the team together. I don't know if that team has... The red team has that superstar player or that, that one quality that they're gonna need to, to perform super well, let alone third. Now I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna stand up for Lucario a little bit here. Uh, I have I have red team in fifth. I also think they're gonna be top half. I think they have a lot of pop up potential because I mean Tommy and Phil have definitely struggled in the super high competition infused season two, but both Jack and Wisp have shown that they can thrive in that situation. Wisp uh, was with the MCC 14 uh, Aqua team and the anyone with that team. Uh, and Jack got to dodge bolt with the yellow yaks uh, the next season They can both be strong competitive players and if we get a, a reinvigorated competitive energy from Tommy similar to violet vampires And if and if we can play battle box so Phil can get his individual points back Then I think red has a very good chance of skyrocketing in the standings So we gotta ask you guys now. What do you think is gonna go down next Saturday? Is red gonna get 10th or top half? Let us know in the comments, and while you're at it, consider subscribing to help us make more fun MCC content. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you on October 23rd at 3 p.m. Eastern Time.